Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Facebook Live. How are you guys? I just had an awesome weekend. I just went to uh, Tampa, Florida over the weekend and went to a Ness Health conference, the bioenergetic conference to learn all the, the latest stuff that they're doing. So I had an amazing time. It was actually in Clearwater Beach, Florida. So I had a very uh, nice, relaxing time and just met so many amazing people that are really changing the world with bioenergetics. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about my top natural cold and flu prevention strategies because, you know, it's cold and flu season and so many people, you know, are, are doing various things to prevent or overcome a cold and flu that actually can make things worse or don't work very well. And uh, so I want to give you guys some alternative strategies, things you may not have heard of to, uh, to help you uh, kick your cold uh, or flu. So let's talk about this. So we're going to discuss why you don't want to take vitamin D, and I'll explain myself in a minute, uh, the best forms of vitamin C, and it's not the, the vitamin C that most people are taking, uh, plant esters that stop a cold dead in its tracks, totally prevent colds. This is one of my favorite things I use. And uh, how selenium inhibits viral replication. No one ever takes selenium when they're sick, but they should. Um, how inducing a fever with heat therapy can prevent or uh, shorten the length of a cold. And how manuka honey is also amazing if you have bacteria in your throat and also use it as a cough suppressant. And how I use bioenergetics to fight colds and flu. And why you have want, want to avoid all the typical conventional cold and flu remedies and the flu shot. I'm not a fan of the flu shot. So we'll talk about all that stuff. So you guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, you want to give me your two cents, uh, please leave a comment and I'm going to answer all of your questions and get involved with you guys, have a little chat, chit chat and discuss with you guys after I go over all of these things. So first thing, um, I'm going to talk about why you want to avoid vitamin D supplementation. So this is kind of counterintuitive. Um, but one thing, one problem with a lot of vitamin D supplements is they are synthetic. They are scraped off the skin of sheep, typically, and then put into a supplement. And when you ingest vitamin D in supplementation form, it doesn't act in the same way as the vitamin D that your body produces when your skin, like ultraviolet light from the sun um, hits your skin that will produce vitamin D or when you get vitamin D from food. These are very, very different things and have very different mechanisms than the vitamin D that you take in a supplement form. So all vitamin D is not created equal. And also there's a big varying quality in supplements as well. Um, so I know a lot of you guys say have low vitamin D on your, most people do have low vitamin D on their, say their, their blood test results they get at their doctors. And a lot of you have taken tons of vitamin D and then find the vitamin D levels don't increase. Well, that's because it's not that simple. Um, it's not just a matter of, there's a lot of things that affect vitamin D and there's vitamin Ds that absorb and some don't, and they don't, most the synthetic supplementation doesn't work very well. Um, so number one, to raise your vitamin D levels, you actually need to take magnesium. Magnesium supplementation will increase your ability to absorb and utilize vitamin D. And I don't, I don't ever recommend anyone take supplements. I prefer getting vitamin D from food. So uh, mushrooms are an amazing source. I regularly eat shiitake mushrooms, maitake, oyster mushrooms. I have a, eat a lot of mushrooms in my diet because not only did they give you vitamin D, they give you beta glucans for your immune system and polysaccharides and all kinds of other things that a lot of people genetically don't make enough of and they need to supplement in their diet. So mushrooms are amazing for a lot of different nutrients uh, to increase your immunity, including vitamin D. And then there's fish. So eating fish, fatty fish will give you vitamin D as well. And then there's also uh, organ meats like liver 
and uh, grass-fed meats, uh, those liverwurst. I like uh, the liverwurst from U.S. Wellness Meats. That's a great source of vitamin D and vitamin A and all the other fat-soluble vitamins. Um, there's many other sources as well. You guys can search, you know, foods that contain vitamin D. Um, but that's really what I prefer. And then, of course, getting sunlight, getting sunlight on a daily basis, you know, not to the point of burning, but just, you know, getting your melatonin uh, uh, triggered. Um, because all that ultraviolet light helps to produce vitamin D that's completely different than the synthetic vitamin D most people are taking. The vitamin D added to milk is synthetic as well. Um, so a lot of it is just uh, just not good for you at all. So also then there's vitamin C. A lot of people take vitamin C when they're sick. Um, but the problem with that, oh, and also I forgot to say something about vitamin D. For, for many people, vitamin D actually is pro-inflammatory. It causes inflammation in their body and it can contribute to, uh, continue to contribute to their illness. And many people, they don't think that at all. There's tons and tons of research on this. Um, there's a great website called the Root Cause Protocol that talks in depth about the problems with vitamin D, all the research that talks about some of the issues with vitamin D. So I'm not saying saying don't supplement with vitamin D. I'm saying get your vitamin D from food. Your fat soluble vitamins, all of like vitamin D, D A, E, K, you want to get those from food. You do not want to get them from supplements. Um, so so vitamin C, it's another one people are are missing the mark on this. The first thing you think of, or most people do, is I have a cold or flu or I feel something coming on. I'm going to take a ton of vitamin C. Well, most people are taking ascorbic acid, which can be problematic. Um, there's Here's the thing. Ide in an ideal world, I prefer people load up on food-based vitamin C. So what I do is I, I eat strawberries. I'll have some um, some amla berry powder. I'll put into a smoothie that has the highest concentration of vitamin C of any food on the planet. So it's also called amalaki berry. And so I just get that powder from Banyan Organics, and I'll put that in a smoothie. Moringa powder also super high in vitamin C. Lots of great vitamin C natural products out there, um, but. Uh, but ascorbic acid um, does help to boost your immune system. It does help to prevent a cold, shorten the length of a cold. But ideally, if you do take ascorbic acid, you want to make sure it's in a liposomal form so that it actually has much, much better absorption because the ascorbic acid most people take is, is not really getting the best absorption. So liposomal vitamin C, and I'll take about two to 3,000 milligrams a day of that when I feel like I'm getting sick or, um, or I have or I haven't had a cold in about three years. I started to get one a little bit last month, but really didn't turn into much. I was just a little bit tired. But when I do feel like I have one coming on, um, I will take some high dose vitamin C and I do a combination so I get the best of both worlds. I'll do some liposomal vitamin C. I love Dr. Mercola's because that was an, is the only one that's in a capsule form because most of them are in liquid form and they don't taste all that great. So I like the capsule form because you can take it with you traveling also. But I also make sure I get my uh, kind of not every day, but at least a couple times a week, I get some amla berry powder with a super, super high concentrated natural dose of vitamin C. And then I want to talk about plant esters. Um, one of the most effective ways I have ever found of preventing a cold is with plant esters. And so these are our molecules that go in and will latch onto viruses and just dissolve them. And so I, I've been using a product. This is called Candida Crush. I've used a product called Catalyst Foundation before, but the same company makes this product called Candida Crush. And it's the same thing as Catalyst Foundation, which you guys have heard me talk about before. Um, but the company is not making Catalyst Foundation anymore, but they're making this new product called Candida Crush the same exact ingredients, but it also has garlic in it, which is amazing for colds also in flu. And this, the plant esters in this basically will 
uh, like I said, go into, attach on to flu viruses and bacteria and just dissolve it. And I have literally probably about, probably about eight times over the last three years, two to three years, I felt like I've started to get a cold, taken this product, even an ear infection too. I'm actually feeling like I'm starting to get an ear infection right now because I was flying on planes the last few days. And I'm taking this and it's it's going down. Like I was just having some tooth pain because of the pressure. I'm taking this three times a day and it's it's going down, like it's fighting it before it's had a chance to develop. And like I said, I've had eight colds that I've prevented with this stuff. And I just, I love it. This is my absolute favorite product to prevent colds and flu. So I'm gonna leave you guys a, a link to this because this is my favorite, my absolute favorite thing that almost no one is talking about, but it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. So I just have to comment about that, um, but I'll do a close up of it. Here's what it's called, Candida Crush. Yeah, that's my favorite. Um, so um, the next thing I wanna talk about is selenium. Selenium inhibits viral replication. And so, yeah, zinc is amazing. You wanna take zinc also and um, but selenium also is a, it's a trace mineral that the body incorporates into proteins to make over 25 different selenoproteins like glutathione peroxidase, which is the number one antioxidant in the body. And so most people today are selenium deficient. I see this on people's hair mineral analyses um, that people uh, just aren't, they don't uh, have enough, they don't get enough in their diet, not eating enough food sources of selenium. And it might be in their, their multivitamin, but it's usually not the right form that actually uh, helps them. Um, so th it's interesting, there's researchers at the University of North Carolina found that when influenza viruses pass through bodies deficient in selenium, they can actually mutate into more damaging forms um, because the selenium um, just helps to, uh, is you know one of the things that helps to kill off viruses indirectly by producing glutathione peroxidase and just helps in other ways. Uh, the selenium helps to prevent uh, DNA damage as well. Um, so selenium is definitely key. I recommend taking 200 micrograms per day and really the only one that I can recommend is Life Extensions um, SE Methyl Selenocysteine. I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> I'm probably You guys are probably gonna want me to spell that out for you. I can't do it right now because it's just too much to, uh, to type in. But yeah, Life Extension SE Methyl Selenocysteine. That's the form that you want. All the other forms, I've given so many different forms to people over the years and they just don't work very well. So this is the only form I found that actually raises people's selenium levels. And, but you can also eat two Brazil nuts a day. That also works. That's also a great way to raise your selenium levels. And so the next thing I wanna talk about is inducing a fever with heat therapy. This is amazing at preventing a cold or reducing the length of a cold. And so that's what I do uh, in an infrared sauna. An infrared sauna can induce like this faux fever to heat up the body and kill off any pathogens which are very heat sensitive like cold and flu viruses. Um, that's why the body will produce a fever to kill off the virus and your cells, you know, tolerate that heat just fine, but the pathogens don't. So this is my sauna right here. I have it in my, my office all ready to go. This is my sauna. It's called a sauna fix sauna. And uh, this is my favorite way when I, I feel like I'm starting to get sick.